Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a rather long one, so uh, you might want to grab a cup of coffee, uh, relax, grab your guitar and hang in there. I want to talk about the fact that guitar playing is hard. Uh, usually there's quite a few uh, videos around trying to uh, tell us that guitar playing is easy and that there's easy ways to solve certain problems or to tackle certain things but actually it is quite hard at times. As a vehicle to, uh, to talk about this, I've chosen the piece uh, Inner Urge uh, from Joe Henderson. I uh, uploaded a playthrough a couple of days ago, so I will uh, insert that here so that you can first listen to the piece that we are going to talk about. <laughs> Okay, that was the theme uh, from Inner Urge. I'll talk about how I uh, tackled that uh, song technically on the guitar, because even that takes a bit, of, uh, a bit of work. And then we will talk about how to improvise over the changes. Uh, so here's a score, I will put it on the screen now, so we can have a look at it. So let's first quickly uh, look at the chords. So as it is stated at the beginning of the song, uh, there's no specific uh, key signature uh, in the beginning, but I sort of feel that it is, it's floating from tonal center to tonal center. So it starts in uh, F sharp uh, minus seven flat five, which is, a Locrian chord, so you could think that actually that first bit, the first four bars are in G. But actually from an uh, improvisational standpoint, uh, you should play uh, Locrian with a natural uh, ninth. So that immediately takes it away from the G major tonality and brings it into the A minor uh, melodic uh, territory. But we will talk about improvisation later. So the first four bars are immediately straight away a bit weird uh, starting a song with a half diminished chord and then the second line is F major 7 flat 5 which is a Lydian chord uh, and that is actually a chord in the tonality of C so you could think like okay the, the bars 5 to 8 are in C then the next line is E flat major 7 flat 5 which is another Lydian chord and there we move into the B flat area uh, without, and that's the danger, without just assuming that this is B flat, it's not, it's actually E flat, uh, major seven flat five, it's a Lydian uh, tonality. So the next line is D flat major seven flat five, which is another Lydian chord. Uh, so it's the fourth degree in A flat, but again, you should think D flat Lydian. And then there's uh, uh, two lines that are, yeah, well, rather unusual. Uh, e major 7, D flat major 7, D major 7, B flat major 7, sharp 11. This is where it jumps from tonality to tonality. So you should just learn, uh, learn to play the chords. Uh, and I wouldn't think too much about uh, the connection between the chords. Because I don't think there is, uh, I'll explain later. And then you got C major seven, A major seven, same principle. It just goes from tonality to tonality. B flat seven, uh, and then to G major seven, which could be considered as <clears throat> the tonic chord of the whole thing. Because I said in the beginning, the F half diminished could be the Locrian chord in G, so that might sort of uh, be in the same territory. So for me, since it ends on a G major 7, the tonality of the song could be considered as being uh, G major 7. The theme is actually, it's written by Joe Henderson, so he's a, uh, a sax player. So it's not written for guitar and immediately when you look at the notes, this is not a tune that is written on a guitar, of course. 
All right, so we got the chords. Uh, you've listened to the song at the beginning of this uh, video. Um, I will now explain you how I uh, play the melody on the guitar. Because there are some technical things that I needed to solve in order to be able to, to play it. So for the first, especially when you play it fast. So the first line, <coughs> excuse me. I do this with down stroke and then up down on the next string. Now I have to really focus on that pattern to go from a down stroke on the D string to an up stroke on the G string and then a down stroke on the G string again. It sounds easier than it actually is. I really have to push my hand down on that third note, that one, which is actually, technically speaking, uh, down. Uh, sorry, an up down on one string. Up down, up down, up down, up down. But it's preceded by downstroke on the string below that, which I find quite challenging. And then. The melody repeats actually, but uh, the lowest note is half a step lower. For the next part, uh, the E flat major 7, flat 5 chord, sorry. I found a solution by doing um, down, up on the D string, and then sweeping or economy picking uh, to the A string. So down, up, up, down, up, up. And then I do a pull off to an open A. And the notes after that are just alternate picking. Okay. So these little technical challenges you have to uh, attack them in the, well, separately so you have to do it one by one and then glue them together and be like a puzzle work on it until you got it in your fingers and then um, go to the next one so and then and then there's another challenge the next one So down, pull off, up, up on the, the, the C, yep, and the second line, second part, yep. There's a little descending lick. All alternate picking. And then there's a little fast riff. So I hammer them on the top notes. Even the transition from one finger to the next on the B and the E string is important. So then you got that bit down and you practice a bit on that. And then you glue parts uh, together. And then we've got this little arpeggio thing. And this is... Uh, well, this could be open to debate. It's written in the real book uh, slightly different. But when you listen to the horn uh, playing from Joe Henderson, it's sort of a slur and it's different on a, on a sax than on a guitar. I hear the first note as a B. And then there's a, a lick that goes down, and I think original, uh, originally it's... Uh, but I play a few more notes. So this is actually an arpeggio. So I pull off, sweep down, pull off again. And then I go back up again. It's 
that fast. And then it re this is C, excuse me, this is the C chord. And you have to focus on where you put your fingers. So this is my pinky, first finger, ring finger, in the, oh, sorry, uh, middle finger, ring finger. And then I, on the same string, I pull off to my first finger. Otherwise I can't walk back up again. And then it's the same in A, so three notes down. Same thing. Uh, and then it goes to uh, B flat seven and there I play. Up again, I do. That's it. So, so that's how I play the theme. As you can see, there are quite a few difficult uh, runs in that uh, song, and this is just a song. So it's, as I said in the beginning, it's not always easy. Sometimes you really have to work hard uh, to get it in your fingers. And if you can do it at slow tempo, that's one thing. But you have to be able to do it in a tempo that actually suits the song. Now let's talk about uh, the improvisation over this theme. Let's look at the chords uh, one by one and uh, see what we can find. When you improvise over uh, pieces like this, I think it's always a good idea to look at how close the chords are actually uh, to one another. It may look like there is very little uh, common ground between them, but there might be more than we think. As I said, that first chord, uh, F sharp minus seven flat five, can be regarded as a Locrian chord. <laughs> in G and you could get away with playing Locrian F sharp Locrian or G uh, it wouldn't sound wrong actually it would actually sound easier uh, more pleasing to the ear uh, I'll let you know yeah I've got the song in the loop so it went to the next chord as you can hear, if you play uh, F sharp Locrian, it sounds fine. But actually, we should play uh, Locrian with a natural nine, and then it becomes a little bit, a uh, little bit more difficult. So this is F sharp. This is the Locrian nine, but this is the natural nine. So it's a immediately that sounds a bit. Different, uh, but it makes it more interesting. Now, if you look at that scale uh, and the fingerings on your fretboard, the second thing I always like to do is first I would like to look at the chords and see where I can find common ground, and there usually is more than we think. Uh, secondly, I would like I like to keep everything in the same area on the fretboard as an exercise. Ideally, you should look at <clears throat> a part of your neck, a fretboard, and try to get all your scales in there. So make it easy on yourself and practice maybe just in one octave for every scale. So if for the first uh, chord we just use this octave. <laughs> And we stay there, we stay within this limit, more or less. So from F sharp to F sharp. The second chord is F, Lydian. Now if you compare the two scales, the first one I, that I played, and the second one, there's not much difference the F sharp goes to an F. And then the 
A sharp, so the natural nine from the local natural nine goes to a, a, a G sharp goes to a G, and that's it. These two notes change. But these things are very difficult for our brains to uh, come to terms with. It's it's easier to go from one massive spot to another one and do different things over there than stay in one area and sort of <coughs> excuse me move just little bits. That is for the human brain uh, quite difficult to do. As you can hear, I'm, I'm absolutely outlining the chords because uh, you can hear the, 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 the tonal changes from one to the next. And I'm not doing much. I'm focusing on those two scales on this part of the neck. I don't do any shortcuts. I'm not thinking C when I play uh, F Lydian. I'm thinking F Lydian, which is F, G, A, uh, B, C, E, A, D, and E. They are the same notes as C, but I'm thinking F Lydian. I'm trying to focus on the fact that it's F with a raised four. And then the third chord is E flat. Uh, major 7 flat 5, which is uh, E flat Lydian. I do the same thing, I try to stay in this area and I try to focus on where my E flat is. So I try to stay in the same area. Again, not much difference, but the differences are important. So now we have three lines covered. Here we go. The next chord, the next line is D flat major 7 flat 5, so it's another Lydian chord. I find it's a really easy fingering. Three notes per string. And then we get to that part where uh, every measure there's a different chord. So we start with uh, E major 7, E flat major 7, D major 7, and then uh, C major 7. What I do here, and I think this is the most common approach, is uh, go for the uh, arpeggios of the chords themselves. You could find uh, pentatonic solutions like on the E major 7. If you play major pentatonic of the fifth, of a major chord, uh, you outline the chord notes uh, really nicely, so that, that, that would be this. Same thing with the D uh, major 7. You could play A flat pentatonic, but I, uh, in this case, I think uh, D major 7, D flat major 7, excuse me. Then D major 7, same thing, I think, uh, of the arpeggio. And I'm, B major 7 with a sharp 11, again arpeggio. And then we've got C major 7. You could think G pentatonic, but I don't. A major 7, same thing. So all these major 7 chords, I just think arpeggios and try to find small steps uh, going from one chord to the next. So the last two majors are B flat uh, 7. You can see that's a mixolydian chord and then G major 7 which is uh, yeah, G major 7 or D uh, pentatonic. So there you go, this is what you can play over these, uh, over these changes. Uh, and it is a lot of work. I mean every chord has got a different scale and you have to find ways to go from one scale to the other whilst sounding uh, musical. That is a challenge. And therefore I said in the beginning, 
guitar playing is not always easy. It is a challenge to uh, to do this. So F sharp minor seven, play locker and natural nine. F major seven, you play Lydian. E flat major seven, Lydian again. D flat major seven, flat five, play Lydian. And here comes E major, D flat major, D major, B flat major, C major, A major, B flat seven, and G major seven. You could hear uh, more or less the changes and, uh, that I'm trying to follow. Uh, I didn't do anything fancy, I just tried to stay on the scales that we've talked about before to uh, make sure that what I've said about staying in this area of the fretboard and uh, doing as little as possible from one chord to the next, so try to find notes that are common and really emphasize the notes that uh, change uh, when the chord changes, sort of to, to, to give the listener a strong feel for the, the harmony that's passing along. Okay, I will do it again and I will call out the names of the chords, but just the root notes. I won't say F major 7 flat 5, I will say F. I don't have time to uh, spell out the whole chord because then the chord will be gone already. So here we go, we start with F sharp. The last four chords, C major, A major, B flat, and G A major 7, there are a few options to go chromatically up through the chords. I've done that at the end, uh, but I forgot to mention that. So if you got C major 7, you could go to the A, to the B flat, to the G. So there are a few options to sort of uh, emphasize that motion from With your uh, with your solo lines, with your lead lines, excuse me. So there you go. There was one example um, of guitar playing being not too easy. It is hard work, and it is hard work. But the hard work is uh, manageable. If you chop it up in little pieces and you work on small uh, on small things. Like stay in one octave, uh, for example, for every uh, for every scale, and work really working on it. I mean, looking at the common tones, looking at the notes that change to emphasize the changes in the uh, in the harmony of the song. You will get there. The only thing is, you have to do this process really slowly in the beginning, uh, but it will become faster and faster because improvising is actually composing, but just faster. So a composer, if a composer would be uh, <coughs> handed out a piece of music that would go like, like this. Now, 
write a piece of music, take all the time in the world uh, to write uh, a nice melody on top of these chords, you may come up with exactly the same thing. But a lot of time and effort has been put into writing this melody. And it's the same with improvising, you just have to do it faster. So there you go, uh, in a urge, uh, some analysis, some options for the lead lines to play uh, and some technical challenges uh, to be able to play the melody as it is written by Joe Henderson. A wonderful piece. Listen to uh, Tom Quayle, listen to Alan Holdsworth, uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel, they have fantastic versions of this song. Okay guys, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'd like to see you next time. Bye bye.